Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Little Railway Adventures, Episode 80, An Old Friend Returns. Gordon was sti still feeling very sad after his accident. What's the matter, Gordon? asks Thomas and Edward. They were very concerned. Oh dear, said Gordon. I realize that after my accident, I'm not, I'm not very young anymore. I'm a quite old engine, and I can't go dancing around on the tracks anymore. I have to be very serious. Thomas and Edward were confused. Gordon, said Edward, I'm much older than you, but I still have fun. Yes, said Gordon, but I'm an express engine. I'm not meant to have any fun. Oh, dear, my life shall be coming to an end quickly. But he's not getting scrapped, said Thomas. It's on different matters, said Edward. Anyway, Gordon, you don't need to get yourself down. You're the fastest engine on Sodor. I was, said Gordon, ever, ever but since Spencer's come to the island, I'm not. Well, you're still the strongest engine, said Thomas. Nope, not since Murdoch came. Oh dear, younger and better engines are replacing me. This is terrible. What am I going to do? Just then, Harold buzzed in. Sorry to disturb you guys, he said, but I have important news. What's, what's the matter? asked Edward. It's not a matter, said, said Harold. It's quite exciting. Sir Topham has brought back an old friend. Really, said Thomas? Who it is? Don't worry, said Harold. You'll find out sooner or later. Find out sooner or later. And he buzzed away. Ooh, said Edward. See, Gordon, a visitor is coming. Who cares, said Gordon. I'm not in the mood for this joke stuff. But it's true, said Thomas. I hear someone puffing along the track. And it has sort of an odd beat. Not like a tank engine, said Thomas. Not like an engine like me or James, said Edward. Definitely not a tender engine. Nearly like two tenders, said Edward. Really, said Gordon? Two tenders? That can only mean one person. Just then, a whistle sounded in the distance. It is, but it can't be. But it is, said Gordon. Oh, dear, Thomas, clear the line. Sorry, said Thomas. He moved into a sidey, and just coming out from the shed, like he had the previous time, was the flying Scotsman. Hello, said Gordon. I'm so glad to see you. I'm very glad to see you, too, said the flying Scotsman. Sir Topham had told me you were still feeling excited about your accident. Yes, I realize that I'm not youth anymore. I'm quite old. Oh, don't worry, said the flying Scotsman. All engines become old. Unless they're scrapped, said Edward. Well, all good engines become old, said, said the flying Scotsman. But never mind that. I'm so glad to see you, Gordon. Same here, said Gordon. I am, too. Ah, family reunion, said Thomas. Yes, indeed, said Edward. It's quite lovely. But just then, there was more trouble. Harold came buzzing in again. He didn't decide to land. What's? Why don't you land? asked Thomas. Sorry, I'm on a tight schedule, said Harold. Anyway, he said Sir Topham Hatt wants to see the Flying Scotsman at Natford Station right away. Oh dear, said the Flying Scotsman. This could only mean trouble. And the Flying Scotsman puffed away. We must talk later, Gordon, he said. Sorry. That's all right, said Gordon. And Gordon, Edward, and Thomas continued their conversation. The Flying Scotsman puffed quickly back to the station. This must mean trouble, he said. He puffed into the station. Emily was sitting there with the express coaches, with Jane also, and also there was James and Ivo Hugh. Hello, said the flying Scotsman. Nice to see you again, James. And nice to see you. Oh, sorry, I've never met you. What's your name? My name's Ivo Hugh. You must be the flying Scotsman. All the engines talked about you. Really, said the flying Scotsman? That's very nice of them. And hello, Emily. Emily didn't say a word. Is something wrong? asked asked the flying Scotsman. No, she's still jealous of you, said James. Unfortunately, that happened to me last time, and I personally didn't get the best out of it. Anyway, Emily, it's stop time trying time to hold a grudge. Oh, be quiet, said Emily. I'm not in the mood. Goodbye. And Emily puffed away. The guard didn't blow his whistle, though, said Ivo Hugh. He is she just wants to get out of here, said James. Emily puffed quickly out of the station. Emily, we've left half our train behind. Who cares? said Emily. I'm not in the mood. Did you fill up on coal, said the driver, as he stopped the train? Nope, said Emily. I didn't figure I'd have to pull the express. Sir Topham had always let Gordon and James and Henry do it. Oh, it is nice. I'm so glad to get on my way. Emily tried to go, but she only moved a few inches. What's the matter, she said. You're out of coal, Emily. We're in trouble now. The news reached the station. I must go get her, said the flying Scotsman. The express can't be late. Having trouble, said the flying Scotsman. Be quiet, said Emily. I'm not in the mood. Sorry, said the flying Scotsman. You aren't in the mood. The flying Scotsman backed up to Emily. And he pushed her to the station. Sir Topham Hatt was cross when he heard the passengers were left behind. He was even crosser when he heard that Emily was going to be made for the train late. Oh dear, he said. I must find an engine quickly. James, you have a train to pull in. I will, Hugh. The train is way too heavy. The only engine left in the yard is the flying Scotsman. You'll have to do it. Yes, sir, said the flying Scotsman. I will. 
Emily was put into a siding. Good luck, she said, but she really didn't mean it. The flying scots and puffed quickly up to the coaches, and the passengers got in. All right, said Sir Top and Pet, here are the rules. And he explained the rules on how to pull the express. Don't worry, said the flying scotsman, I'm ready. And he puffed away quickly. At first he went slowly, around, at first he went slowly, and Sir Top and Pet was cross. We don't have all day. I know, said the flying scotsman, I know. I'm just taking my time. He came into the yard. Peep, peep. Edward, move out of the way. Sorry, said Edward. Hey, that sounds familiar, said Gordon. And it was. The flying Scotsman raced to the scrapyard so fast that Gordon hardly didn't even recognize him. Neither could Thomas and Edward. Who was pulling that train, said Thomas. Yeah, Gordon, who was it? You have good eyesight. I think it was Henry, said Gordon. But Henry doesn't have two tenders. And Henry is green, though, said Edward. Then it must have been the flying Scotsman. It was the flying Scotsman. Go, 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 he shouted. The flying Scotsman charged along the line. The passengers were very surprised. They had never been pulled this fast before. But there was trouble. There was more trouble ahead. The driver was concerned. What's the matter, said Sir Topham Hat. He had climbed into the cab. Oh dear, said the driver, we just got here and we forgot to fill up on coal. I thought you guys filled up on coal when you left your railway. Yes, but our railway is very long, uh, very far away. The Flying Scotsman has an entire tender, had an entire tender full of it. But unfortunately, we met a lot of obstacles on our way. We never got a chance to fill up. Father, said Sir Top of Pat, you guys didn't have to consider it. There's no coal loader along this line. The flying Scotsman began coasting. He tried not to go up as fast as over the hills, but let himself roll down the other side without producing too much steam. Finally, the flying Scotsman came into the docks. This was his last stop. All right, said Sir Topham Hatt. This is it, he said. You're going to have to make it to the station. But we're really low on coal, said the fireman. You're going to have to coast even more. Right, said the, said the flying Scotsman. I will do it. He was going very, very slow now. Oh, dear, said Sir Topham Hatt. We're out of coal. Yes. Hey, wait, said the driver. I have an idea. He kept the flying Scotsman going, but at a very slow pace. What is it, said Sir Topham Hatt. We don't have enough time. Oh, dear, he said. Look, the station, it's right there. Flying Scotsman, you must go. I'm trying, he said, but I can't move. Don't worry, said the fireman. I have a great idea. What is it, said Sir Topham Hat. We take some water from his tender and splash it on his hot coals. What's that going to do? It's only going to damp his fire. Yes, but that will create steam, and steam will make him go faster. You're right, said Sir Topham Hat. That's perfect. The fireman did just that, and the Flying Scotsman had just enough steam to go into the station. Everybody was waiting. You said James. We were afraid you weren't going to make it, Flying Scotsman. Don't worry, said the Flying Scotsman. I made it. Sir Topham Hatt was very pleased. Thank you, Flying Scotsman, for doing such a great job. And thank you to you as well, he said to the driver and fireman. Without your clever thinking, we wouldn't have made it. Don't worry, he said. We're always proud. Why? asked Abihu. Simple, they said, because we are the driver and fireman of the Flying Scotsman.